Okay, thank you for coming in and visiting this uh, or seeing this video. Um, we're going to go over the independent practice, which is on page 159. We're going to go over numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 10. The answers are on the side, so if you already did it and you want to check how you did, there it is. Look at that. Number 1 is 70. Number 3 is 50. Number 5 is $50. Number 7 is 15 cups. Again, don't forget, when you have a number, you got to tell me what the number means. All right? Number 20 is 20 cups as well. And number 10 says, see the chart. Now, what chart am I talking about? There it is. Okay. Number 10. I'll explain this in just a moment, but for those of you that did it is, okay, now back to work. All right, let's just get right into it. Let's do this, get it done. We'll start off with number one. Read the directions first. Use a double number, oops, did I read the right directions? I don't know. Oh, they really, let's see. Use double number lines to find the missing number. Oh, look at that, it's the same thing. 63 is 90% of what number? Like I said, do you have to copy the problem down? No, but it helps. It prevents confusion later on because I don't know how you are, but I already told you with the, the guided practice. In my head, I, I, I see 63, but I might say 63%, which confused me and totally changed the answer. All right, so 63, again, we need a number line and a percent line. Double it means you're gonna write two. They both start with zero. Now, the good thing about percent, when you're talking about a whole, you'll, the denominator will never change. You'll always have 100%. When you have a whole thing, it's 100%. What might change, or what, not, not what might, what always changes is the whole number. Well, when you have a whole, what, what are you talking about? One solid thing, a set, uh, a group. This is what makes this uh, a little harder, but it's not so bad. So here we go. 63 is 90% of what number? Okay. 63 is a part because it goes with the 90%. And 90% is less than 100, which is less than a whole. Okay, now, with the other problems that I've shown you, you could have just, you jumped from 0 to 90, and then kept adding 90 plus 90 plus 90, or if it was 20%, 0 plus 20, 20, 40, 60, and you stopped till you got to 100. Now, the thing with this is, from 0 to 90, that's a plus 90, which is fine, but if you add 90 here, you get 180. 100%. So I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, okay. 100%, we have 90. And a zero, maybe this means I have to divide it into groups of 10, right? Which makes sense, look at this. From 90 to 100, it's plus 10, right? Let me erase that 90, I don't want to get you confused. So let's do the same thing here, let's do 10. You realize when you're drawing this, it may not be perfectly to scale, that's okay. It's just for you to, you know, do the work here. So you can see it, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Now see, that's not scale. I mean, some parts are bigger than others, but that's okay, that's okay. It's just to understand the idea, okay? Look at that, beautiful. And all these are percents, all right? Think of if that helps. Okay, anyways. So, if we divided this into 10 parts, because that is 10 parts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, that means we have to do the same thing here, 10 parts. And again, I'm just following along, corresponding. Okay, oof. Now let's think of something. Now here, here we have a problem, right? Like this is a little confusing. From zero to nine, it's pretty easy. 10, 20, da, 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 da. We have zero to 63, and we have nine parts. From zero to 63, let me use a different color so you can see what's going on. This is where you have to think a little bit. And you can do this, nine parts. So then you have to break up 63 into nine parts. Sounds like a division problem to me. So nine groups, I don't know right, right. I said nine and I wrote six. Something wrong with me, people, but that's all right. Groups of nine, or nine groups, nine parts, nine groups. We have 63, you have to divide 63 into nine groups. Well, if you know your tables, that's seven. That means each part is seven. Plus seven, plus seven, 
So seven, 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 and so forth, right? Well, guess what? That means you have to add another seven here. What's 63 plus seven? 70. Okay then, the answer is 70. Right? Seven plus seven, if I can do this one, I can do it very neatly. 7, 14, 21, um, 28, 30, I'm forgetting my times tables, 35, 42, 49, plus 7 is what? Let's see, that's 56, 63, 70, yeah. Okay, not so bad. And that's number 1, okay? It's just thinking, people. It's, if you can add and divide just a little bit, you can do this. Okay, number 2, same thing, use double number line. To show how 80, I almost said percent, 80 is 25% of what number? We don't know the whole number. Okay, here we go. My number line, my percent line. Again, let me remind you that the order doesn't matter. If you want to do the percent line first and the number line second, that's fine. Okay, 0%, zero. zero. If we have nothing, it's zero. When we have everything in terms of the percent, it's 100 percent. This is what we don't know. Okay. We know we have 25 percent. That's about here somewhere. This should look very similar to a guide to practice problem we've already done. But let's go with this. 80 is 25 percent of what number? That's what we don't know. Okay. I'm looking at this. 0 plus 25 gives me 25. Can I keep adding 25 to get to 100 and stop without passing? Let's find out. I think so. Some of you might already know the answer. But I just want to show you what's going on. And yes, I'm doing something in my head. But I'm showing you the work too so you can see what, what I'm going, where I'm going with this. But anyways, okay then. I can divide this percent bar into four parts. Why? Because I know if I keep adding 25, I can do it. It works out evenly. So I'm going to say, I'm going to assume then that I can do the same thing here. But instead of adding 25, I'm going to add 80. I'm going to break this into four parts as well, right? One, two, three, four. 80 plus 80. 160. Plus 80. 240. Plus 80. 320. Okay. On the side, you can you can add here if you're, if you're not. There you go. Okay. All right. So let, let's let's take a step back and see what we just did. So, eighty is twenty five percent of three hundred twenty five. So not three hundred twenty five. Three hundred twenty. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're going to speed it up a little bit. We're going to go up to number three right now. This time we are using percent proportions, okay? So number three, it says 22 is 44% of what number? All right, again, percent proportion, we have our two ratios. I was thinking part, and I wrote percent. Times are crazy, part to whole. And then we have a percent on the other side. But the denominator is always going to be 100. Okay. There you go. And 22 is 44. 22 is 44%. Again, you don't have to do that. I'm just doing that for my own benefit. Okay. Now, here's the deal with this. Really look at it. Think about it. See the connection. Okay. From 22 to 44, I notice that I can scale up by 2. Right? 22 times 2 is 44. We're making equivalent ratios, which is a proportion. Right? Percent, proportion. All right. Now, if we know the factor is 2, whatever you did to the numerator, you do to the denominator. So what number times 2 gives you 100? It's going to be 50. Now, if you didn't understand why, where I got the 50, just like before, you're going to have to do some division. Kind of 
You already have set the problem set up. Just kind of do this, and you can see it. Oh. If something times 2 gives me 100, that means going the other way, 100 divided by 2 gives me 50. There's a connection. Okay. So that's number 3, then. $50. All right. Up to number 5. It's a word problem, so let's figure out what's going on first. A store is having a sale or winter clothes are 60% off the original price. The sweater is on sale for $30. What was the original price of the sweater? Again, again, before you go into it, since it's a word problem, you might want to draw a picture just to get the story going. Okay, this looks more like a shirt, but okay, let's just make it fuzzy. Here's my sweater. Okay. Okay. We're buying a sweater. Again, I like bars, so you're going to see me draw bars a lot. At 100%. That's full price. Do we know what the full price is? No, that's what we're trying to find out. Okay. We do know that it's on sale, and it's on sale. Instead of paying 100% of the price, you're only, you're only going to pay this much, 60% of the price. Okay. And how much is that sale price? The sale price is $3. So then the question, well, how much was it before the sale? Okay. So... To rewrite the problem, 30 is 60% of what number? Hashtag. All right, let's do this. Use percent proportion. All right, part to whole. $30 is 60% of what number? Now here's the deal. If you set these up correctly, if you do, if you put the numbers in the right place, and it all makes sense, the math becomes easy. Okay, so it helps if you just take a little time, set it up, visualize it if you can. What is it you're actually doing before you do this part? Don't just jump right to this. Okay, especially with word problems. Think about it. What's going on? What number is the part? What number is the whole? What number is the percent? Okay, think first. Think smarter not work harder. Okay. Now with what I just said, very similar to what we did before. I know that if I multiply 30 by 2, I get 60. So then I have to think about, hey, what number times 2 gives me 100? Guess what? 50. $50. Right? Oh, I should add this. On the quiz, what I'm asking you guys to do, instead of writing a full sentence, I just want you to add the number and the word that goes with it, okay? So in this case, this is fine, $50, right? But it, I might ask you to write down the blank was originally blank. And I'll ask you, okay, what are we talking about? $50, yeah, so what? what does that $50 mean? So on the quiz, I'll ask you to write down a noun. The sweater was originally $50, okay? When I did this last time, a lot of you got really confused and you didn't know what to write. Again, numbers on their own don't make any sense. You have to tell me with a noun or a verb or something, what is that number talking about, okay? So keep that in mind for the quiz. Okay, you might see something like this. Or I might just say, well, you'll see. Let's look at the next example. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right, up to number seven. <clears throat> you have to use a table. If you have three cups of pineapple juice, how many cups of punch can you make? All right, now this is one of those things where you have to have the table in front of you. So we're making this punch. And forgive me, I'm telling you right ahead of time. It won't be to scale, but you get the idea. All right. We're making punch. It's it's a thing you drink, okay? In this case, it's a drink, a punch, you know, fruit punch, that kind of deal. All right, 100% of the punch makes so many ounces, so many cups of juice, right? We don't know the cups, but we do know the recipe. Now, according to this, the recipe is 40% ginger ale 
And again, I went through the sharp pen. 25% OJ, orange juice. 20%. You know what? I'm going to scale it down like this because it may not work. And the last part's going to be sorbet. Okay, the, the point is, all this, when you add it up, comes out to 100%. Okay? Now, question number seven is, okay, it's all ratios. So, if you were to divide the juice into 100 parts, 40 parts would be ginger ale, 25 parts would be orange juice, 20% would be pineapple juice, and 15% would be sorbet. All right. So, we know we have three cups of pineapple juice. We have three cups, right? Excuse me. So, let me write the problem here. Three cups is 20%. Yes, you have to use the right percentage. Is 20% of what number? Again, assuming you do everything to scale, everything in the right way, okay? If you use three cups of pineapple juice and you do everything else according to scale, how many cups will you have of punch when you put everything together? All right, so let's do this. Let's do this. Part to whole. Here's the part. We don't know the whole. Here's the hundred, and we're talking about twenty percent. I'm looking at my drawing. I'm looking at the table. By the way, the table. If you haven't opened up the book, it's right there. I'm not making this up. See? Okay. Anyways. Ooh, now. You're like, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. You haven't taught us this yet. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. We can't scale up by some whole number. We can by some decimal number or a fraction even. When this happens, you're going to have to simplify. Again, remember I told you this before? When all else fails, simplify one of the fractions and see what happens. All right, so 20 per 100. You divide both those by a factor of 20. So you still have this, but now you have 1 over 5. Oh, look at that. The magic has returned. Okay. You should be able to see now we're making two ratios that are equivalent. You can go from 1 to 3 by a factor of 3. 1 times 3 gives you 3. That means you do the same thing here. 15. Okay. The answer is 15. But it's not just 15. So on the quiz, if it's a problem, 15 what? What are we talking about? Keep it simple. 15 cups. You don't have to write down 15 cups of pineapple juice. I'm only going to give you two spots, two boxes to write the answer in. So keep it simple. 15 cups. All right? All right, number nine. Almost done here, guys. We're almost done here. Another word problem. Okay, Elise does not like sorbet, so she omits that ingredient and adds 5% of each of the other ingredients. How many cups of punch will she have if she uses six cups of orange juice? Okay. Oof. All right. I didn't want to do this, but we're going to have to do this, the scale real fast. Look. Let's look at the scale. I'm going to write in my book. Ooh, bad teacher. Okay. So this is what this girl's going to do. Elise doesn't like sorbet. So see how it's 15%? This is going to take that out. And she's going to add 5% to everything else. Okay. Five percent plus five percent plus five percent, because one way or another, this whole thing has to add up to one hundred percent, right? The fifteen that I took out from here, there it is. So instead of sorbet, she's going to add five percent more of each of the other juices. Now we have forty-five percent, thirty percent, and twenty-five percent, right? All right. So let's see what we can do with this. Okay. Nine. Six cups of OJ, orange juice, is 30%, there's our new number, of what number? Okay. Six cups. If everything's in proportion, everything's the same, 
if you had six cups of OJ, that means you're going to have how many cups of everything. We put everything all together. How much, how much juice are you going to have? So here's the part, six cups. You don't know how much juice we're going to have. You know what? Should I draw the visual? Sure, on the side. 100%. We don't know this. 100% of juice. We do know six cups. 30% is somewhere about here. And this is just OJ. Right? Six cups. So there it is. But when you add everything else, it's not just going to be six cups. It's going to be so many cups of ginger ale, so many cups of pineapple juice to give you how many cups plus total. Again, pineapple juice, orange juice. We don't know how many cups. We don't know. We don't know how many cups of this. So it's basically orange juice plus pineapple juice plus <laughs> ginger ale. Excuse me. GA ginger ale. Six plus whatever plus whatever gives you a total. That's what we're trying to figure out right now. So six cups of orange juice over the top, we don't know. 30%, 30 per hundred. Okay, again, keep your eyes open and your mind open. We can scale up six by a factor of five to get 30. This is where it's gonna get a little weird. Some number times five gives you a hundred. So if you break up a hundred, into five groups how much is in each group sounds like a division problem you can do it on your own but you do find out that it is 20 right 100 divided by 5 is 20 yes or if you break 100 into groups of five how many fives are you going to have 20 either way the answer is 20 and it's not just 20 it's 20 cups don't forget that on the quiz if it's a word problem, give me the number and what it is we're talking about. What noun are we talking about? Okay, last one, number 10. I'm gonna have to show you the chart because really there's no work on this. It's just think about what's going on. Think about it. This whole deal is about part to whole, part to whole. Three fourths, three out of four. Numerator is the part, denominator is the whole set, right? Three out of four. 12% of 225. 12% is just the whole. 12 is part of 100%, right? And our percent goes with 25. But in this case, if you, if you can see it, this is the part, this is the whole, and we have everything, right? 47% part to whole. 47 per 100 part to whole. Part to whole, right? I realize the order went from A to C, but it still stands to whole part to whole okay 12 out of 400 if you can imagine there's a fraction 12 120 over 400 numerator is usually the part denominator is the whole right now how does this help you here's a sample answer in a percent proportion one ratio compares a part to the whole the other ratio is the equivalent percent written as a fraction with a denominator of 100 it's what you've been seeing all along. These are percent proportions that I've been showing you. Yes? Part to whole, part to whole. If you know the part, you can figure out the whole. And the other part is an equivalent percent written as a fraction. 30%, 30 per 100. Okay, guys, that's it for the extra practice. I hope this helps.